Hey guys, in this particular video, I'm going to be introducing you to solving a problem involving calculating the moment of inertia of area of a T-bar. So let's say that this is our T-bar, and let's say that this dimension here is 100 millimeters, so it's from here to here. Let's say that this dimension here is 20 millimeters from here to here. This is 30 millimeters from here to here, and this is 80 millimeters from here to here. And let's say that we've previously been given that the distance um, to this of the centroid from the bottom of the t-bar is actually just 85.5 millimeters. We calculated that in a previous problem, so I won't bother proving it again in this particular video. And let's say I wanted to find out the moment of inertia of area, Ix, about the centroid C. How would I do that? Have a shot at this yourself first. If you can't do it, that's okay, but it's really important you have a shot at this yourself first. Okay, perhaps the most important thing to do here before we just jump into the calculations is do a little bit of revision on what the parallel axis theorem is. Recall that if you've got, um, say, a particular, uh, let's let's just make it a rectangular box, right? Let's let's figure out what the moment of inertia is about its center, and that will just be we proven this in a previous video. It's one on twelfth. Uh, 1 12th times b h cubed, where this is b and this is h. This is going to be ix of your center of your block in this case. But let's say we wanted to calculate the moment of inertia about a parallel axis, let's say this axis just here. Well, we know from the parallel axis theorem that the moment of inertia about this point, let's call it o, is just going to be equal to I O is just going to be equal to 1 on 12 b h cubed plus a d squared, where a is going to be the area of our box, a, or bh, if you like, and d is going to be the distance from here to here, d, right there. So d in this case um, is always the distance between your two axes, your parallel axes, hence the name parallel axis theorem, right? It's the distance between this axis and this axis just here. Okay, this is really crucial to know what, par what the parallel axis theorem is because we're going to be applying the parallel axis theorem twice. Okay, so now that we've got the revision sorted, let's see if we can focus on solving the problem a little bit more directly. Okay, first things first, I'm going to split this t-bar into two objects. I'm going to split it into one bar here and I'm going to split it into another bar here, right there. And I'll call this bar bar 1, and I'll call this bar, bar 2. Maybe you're starting to see now the importance of um, using this bar here earlier, because um, this uh, we're going to deconstruct into two separate bars. Okay, another important thing we need to know is the moment of inertia about our centroid is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of our bar 1. In fact, let me use green. It's going to be the moment of inertia about our bar 1 about the centroid, plus the moment of inertia of bar two about its centroid, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the moments of inertias of each of these bars separately and then add them all up. Okay, so what will be, whoop, let me just write this below. In fact, let me zoom out to get a little bit of space. There we go, I hope you can still see. Okay, so let's get working on it. What's I1C, the moment of inertia about um, the centroid for bar one? Well, we know that the moment of inertia of the center of bar 1, this little green dot that I'm drawing, is going to be 1 on 12 times by bh cubed, which in this case is 20, this, times by 100 cubed, which is this, right? That's going to be the moment of inertia about this green dot that I'm drawing, which is about the center of bar 1. But this is where we use parallel axis theorem because we're going to be adding that to our area, which in this case is just 20 times 100 times by the distance. In this case, our d value, this is going to be d1. d1 is the distance between here and here. What's that distance? Well, we know that this distance is going to be 50 millimeters, right, because that's half of 100, which means that we know that this distance right here, this distance right here is just going to be 100, sorry, it's going to be 85 85.5 minus 50, right, which we can work out is just going to be equal to uh, 35.5 squared. So that's the moment of inertia of area about of bar 1. Now let's do the second one. Okay, so now let's work on this blue bar just here. Well, what's the moment of inertia about the center of our blue bar? Our center is going to be just there, and it's going to be 1 12th base times height, which is going to be 80 times 30. It's, and it's base times height cubed, so it's 80 times 30 cubed, 
and now we use the parallel axis theorem again and the parallel axis theorem dictates that it's going to be plusing AD so our area is going to be 80 times 30 and we're going to be timesing that by the distance D2 which in this case will just be this distance from here to here that's this distance that's D2 that's D2 just here that's D2 right well what's that distance well that's gonna be um, in fact let me just draw it down here that's just gonna be this distance from here to here which is gonna be 15 half of 30 plus this distance just here which is just gonna be 100 100 minus 85.5 and if you plug that into your calculator you're left with 15 plus 100 minus 85.5 leaves you with an answer of 29.5 millimeters so we're going to be timesing that by 29.5 millimeters squared okay so if we go if we chunk through all the mathematics in our calculator if we type this entire expression into our calculator right now We'll have our answer and fortunately I've prepared this before so our answer is going to be IX which is the moment of inertia about the centroid of our t-bar is going to be 6.46 times 10 to the 6 a big number millimeters to the power of 4 and if you're interested in putting this in more SI units that's the same thing as 6.46 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the power of 4 so that's our answer, the moment of inertia about our centroid of our T-bar. So that's about this point just here, the centroid. Okay, guys, I hope that makes sense. I might be doing one more really challenging problem, which um, involves solving a very similar type of problem, but in a very more, but in a much more, I guess, uh, unique way.